Welcome back to the walkthrough of the 2021 Broadcom Masters application. Now we're going to move on to part two, which is about your project. Some general advice for this section is to consider it like a judging interview. If you're having trouble getting started, answer the questions out loud, record your answers, and use this as a base for your answers. The questions will seem less overwhelming that way. Remember, you've probably already answered these questions before at your local science fair. Note that this section is also two pages, just like part one, which means that you'll need to click next at the bottom of the first page to continue. The first thing that we ask you to do is to pick a category for your project. These categories might be different from your local fair, and they're merely a guide so that we have the correct expertise reviewing your project. Your category can be the same or different from what you entered at your fair. If you're stuck, consider what type of expert you think would best understand the work you've done. You can also click the link here and see descriptions of all the categories to help you decide. Next, we ask for your project title. It's okay to change your project title from your local fair. If your title includes special characters, please write them in capital letters and explain below if it's a symbol, bold font, italics, or anything else. If it's something simple like a period or an exclamation point, you don't need to write that out. Um, we will understand. Next, we ask for your grade. And we ask you again if you can remind us if this is a team project. You'll notice now that we have word limits on these questions. Word limits are intended to give everyone equal space and to ask that you present your material precisely. This is great practice. If you're having trouble, write out what you wanna say in a Word document and then edit your text to fit the word limit. Programs like Microsoft Word have easy word counts to aid you in this. Concise writing and staying on topic of each specific question is the goal. Also, don't feel pressured to use all the words in the word limit. If you don't need to use all 200 words, for example, you don't need to. The first group of questions here is about your project overview. This is your opportunity to share your science or engineering project with us. Through the list of questions below, we're trying to help you break down your project in a way that gives our judges what they need to review your work. For engineering projects, we have offered an alternative option for most questions. You should answer these questions with enough detail so the judge understands what you did, how you did it, why you chose to do things in a certain way, and what your results were. Remember, our judges can't see your project board, so it's important that you're clear and precise. First, we ask for your inspiration behind your project. Where did you get this idea? Next, we ask for a project summary. You can choose to either share an abstract with us. Some people have already written these for their science fair, but again, maximum of 250 words here. Or you can select to give us an elevator pitch, which is to imagine that you're on an elevator and you only have until the 10th floor to describe your project to a potential investor. So you have to create an elevator pitch. Next, we ask if you're selected as one of the top 300 masters or one of the 30 finalists, if we have permission to share this summary with the media. Our PR team uses this to pitch your information. Lastly, we ask why your project is important to research. This is helpful for the evaluators to determine why you did your project and who it will benefit in the future. When you're done with this section, Again, you can either hit save and continue editing, which will save your progress here, and you can keep working on this page, or you can click next to go to the second page of this section. So now we're on page two of part two project information, and this page really gets into the meat of your project. So if you're feeling stumped, remember that you can take a look at your science fair poster or whatever materials you used at your science fair this year, um, this section is designed to feel like a judging interview at your science fair. So you're gonna have the opportunity uh, in another task to share any kind of visuals, graphics, tables um, that contain data, et cetera, uh, 
for your project, but this section is really about the descriptions behind the work that you did. So the first question asks about your research question. What was your research question? For engineering projects, we want to know what was the human need or problem that you wanted to solve? This is a pretty straightforward question. The next question asks, what was your scientific hypothesis or engineering design criteria? Here, we want to know what you thought the answer would be to your research question or what goals you set for your engineering project. The next question asks about your methodology and procedures for carrying out your project or building your design. There are a few sub questions here to help you get started. For example, what data did you collect and how did you collect that data? For engineering projects, you can tell us how you built your design. We also want to know in this section a little bit about your testing procedures. Um, for engineering projects, you can talk about how you tested your device or prototype that you designed. In this section, you should also talk about your control group and variables that you tested, including your independent, dependent, and controlled variables. So it, for this response, it's okay to submit a list of your procedures or you, you can write it out in paragraph form, whatever you're most comfortable with but make sure you're responding to the questions above. Just be sure to be thorough and don't assume that the judges know why you did something a certain way. In this section, to ex help explain things to the judges better, you can also reference items in your visual aid. For example, you can write C chart two, and then the evaluator or judge reading your application will know to look at that particular chart We'll talk about the visual aid in detail uh, in another video. Next, this question asks, how did you analyze and interpret your data? So with this question, the judges and evaluators are looking for what story does your data or your observations about the testing of your engineering design tell us? Some of the questions that you would want to consider in your response are what were the results of your data collection? Did you notice any patterns in the data? And did you use any special statistical methods or analyses when conducting your research? Again, you can reference any figures, tables, or charts from your visual aid in this section as well. And then the evaluators and judges can go ahead and take a look at those charts or figures when they're reading this section. Next, we ask, what conclusions do you reach? Here, you want to revisit your hypothesis or engineering design criteria. Does your data support your hypothesis? And you can tell us why are we not. Here, you can also describe any limitations that you might have had in your study and how it affected your results. For example, were your results limited by factors such as time or resources? Feel free to include any of that information here. Overall, in your conclusions, the judges and evaluators want to know what your results mean based on your original question. The next few questions ask for a little bit of additional information beyond the experimentation of your project. So first, what questions or problems arose that you were not expecting? In the future, how would you adjust your project to address these problems? Next, we ask for any future directions you might have for this project. If you could continue exploring this, this topic, what would you do? Then we ask, what was your favorite part of work working on your research project? Hopefully this should be pretty easy to answer. The next question asks, where did you conduct your experimentation? A few different options are listed here and you can select all that apply. For example, if you did part of your uh, research at school and part in a lab or part, um, part of it was field research. You can select all that apply here. Um, and if you select any of the last three options, it's going to ask you to please specify uh, exactly where you worked. This just helps give context to the evaluators and judges um, about your research. 
next, this is an important question. Uh, we're asking about who else contributed to your research and what resources did they bring to your project? We know that science and engineering research and projects are never a solitary activity. So we just wanna know a little bit more about who helped you along the way. The next question is a little bit similar, but it's more specific for if you were a member of a team project. Here is your chance to tell us uh, exactly how the work was divided amongst your team. So you should list out each team member here and describe what each person's role was in your research project. If you were not a member of a team project, you do not need to answer this question. So finally, we're at the last question in this task. And this asks about how COVID-19 impacted your learning and your research project this year. We are aware that the past year has been difficult and may have affected your ability to work on your project. Tell us here how things might have been disrupted for you so that the evaluators and judges can better understand your situation. So now that we've filled in everything on this page, we can hit mark as complete. And now part two is completed. Again, you can always hit the three little dots on the right hand side to edit this, this section if you need to make any changes. This concludes the overview of part two, your project information. Next, we'll talk about the visual aid.